Welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Redeemer in Bethesda, Maryland, and our online streaming of The Five, our afternoon service. We're glad you're with us, and please be sure and download the PDF so that you can follow along. And I do hope you'll be singing with us and doing all the responses as well. So uh, let's take a moment and get ourselves ready for worship, and we'll continue with our first hymn. Dear God, we thank you for all that is good, for our creation and and for our humanity, for the stewardship you have given us of this planet Earth, for the gifts of life and of one another, for your love which is unbounded and eternal. Thou most holy and beloved, our companion, our guide along the way, our bright evening star, we repent the wrongs we have done. We have wounded your love. O God, hear us. We stumble in the darkness. Light of the world, transfigure us. We forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, dwell in us. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant that you, grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out 
by the Spirit of the Lord and sent me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were many, very many living in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were many sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you will live, and I will place you on your own soil, that you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and ha ha after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? 
Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could, he, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you will always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Many years ago, I was introduced to a wonderful book. The title is Lamb, 
the gospel according to Biff, Christ's childhood friend. It was written by Christopher Moore, and it's provided me with a source of irreverent inspiration, so I've decided to share some of it with you, appropriately edited. Moore sets the story of the raising of Simon Lazarus through the eyes of Joshua and Martha, Thomas the twin, Matthew, and Joseph of Arimathea. Biff is the narrator. The story goes like this. When we got to Bethany, Martha was waiting for us in the street in front of Simon's house. She went right to Joshua and he held out his arms to embrace her. But when she got to him, she pushed him away. My brother's dead, she said. Where were you? I came as soon as I heard. Where is he? Joshua asked, his voice booming over the sobs and protests. He bought a tomb in Kidron, said Martha. Well, take me there. I need to see my friend. Dead, said Thomas. Dead, dead, dead. There was a sparkle of hope amid the tears in Martha's eyes. Wake him? Dead as a doornail. Dead as Moses. Matthew clamped his hand over Thomas's mouth. You believe that Simon will rise from the dead, don't you? asked Joshua. Well, in the end, when the kingdom comes and everyone is raised, yes, I believe, said Martha. Do you believe I am who I say I am? Of course. Then show me where my friend lies sleeping. Thomas and Matthew helped Martha walk along while I walked with Joshua. Four days dead, Josh. Four days. Divine spark or not, the flesh is empty. Simon will walk again if he is but bone, said Joshua. Okie dokie, but this has never been one of your better miracles. Well, when we got to the tomb, there was a tall, thin, aristocratic man sitting outside eating a fig. I thought you would come here, he said. Rabbi, I'm Joseph of Arimathea. How may I serve? Stand up, Joseph. Help roll away the stone. Joshua put his arms around Maggie and Martha while the rest of us wrestled with the stone. And as soon as the seal was broken, I was hit with a stench that gagged me, and Thomas actually lost his supper in the dirt. These things, said Matthew. I thought he would smell more like a cat, said Thomas. Thomas had confused leper with leopard. Anyway, Joshua held his arms out as if waiting to embrace his friend. Come out, Simon Lazarus. Come out into the light. Nothing but stench came out from the tomb. Come forth, Simon. Come out of that tomb, Joshua commanded. And absolutely nothing happened. Simon, darn it, come out of there. And ever so weakly, there came a voice from inside the tomb. No. What do you mean, no? You've risen from the dead. Now come forth. Show these unbelievers that you have risen. I believe, I said. Convinced me, said Matthew. Simon, get your leprous behind out here, Joshua commanded. But I'm... I'm all icky. Finally... Joshua lowered his arms and stormed into the tomb. I can't believe that you bring a guy back from the dead and he doesn't even have the courtesy to come out. Whoa, holy moly. Joshua came backing out of the tomb, stiff-legged. Very calmly and quietly, he said, We need clean clothes and some water to wash him and bandages. Lots of bandages. I can heal him. 
But we have to sort of get all of his parts stuck back together first. So I resort to comedy because I would much rather be funny than think about the inevitability of my own demise, especially during a pandemic. Lazarus may be getting a second chance, but he's still going to have to die another day. And on that day, Jesus will not again be calling him forth and demanding the funeral linens be removed. On that day, Lazarus will begin his journey toward dry bones. Lazarus's fate is the fate of us all. We can live better through chemistry and by making good choices, but we can't escape the fact that we will die. I, I know that something's going to eventually get me, whether it's my own lousy gene pool, the inattentive and simultaneous driving and texting of the person in the car ahead of me, or some strange airborne spore. Because I believe what I preach, I know that at the, that point my life will change, not end. And that leads me back to the scriptures. Dry bones and the stench of a new-made grave. Both have something to say about our response to God's call to us. When I envision a valley of dry bones, I see community disconnected, nothing holding the bones together. There are no sinews of compassion to knit together the skeleton. The life's blood of communication has been poured out on the ground. The bones over which Ezekiel prophesied were bones of slain warriors. Their disconnectedness was not of their choosing. The dry bones of our personal disconnectedness often come from our choices, and sometimes they're thrust upon us. Dry bones are those times after friends or family move away, or worse, when friendships or other relationships have come to an end. Dry bone times are when my prayers feel unanswered, or worse, unheard. Dry bone times are brittle, fragile, cut off completely. They seem hopeless. And then there are new graves. Newly made graves stink. At least they did in Lazarus' day. No fancy embalming, no posthumous cosmetics, no hermetically sealed caskets dropped into concrete vaults. In Lazarus' day, the women washed his body and wrapped it in linen. They added some myrrh to keep the smell from encroaching during the burial rites. And then it was off to the tomb to let worms and enzymes do their work of reducing former vitality to bones and dust, while those left behind are reduced to weeping and wailing. It makes me wonder, what festers in our souls? What rots under the linens that keep us bound? And what myrrh are we applying to hide the stench? Instead of community disconnected, in the newly made grave I see disconnection that we create within ourselves and between ourselves and God. Within us, there is forgiveness unoffered and forgiveness unaccepted. Within us, there is the denial of the image of the God who made us. We foster hurts suffered and fail to acknowledge the hurts we've authored. Allowed to fester, these hurts and denials and lack of forgiveness eat at our souls and at our self-esteem to the point that we forget who and whose we are. To reconnect body and soul, to reconnect ourselves to community, we need God, and God needs us. We need God to be the one to whom we turn. We need God to calm our fears, hear our prayers, bolster our courage. 
And God needs us to prophesy and call to life and wholeness those who find themselves scattered in valleys not of their choosing. God needs our voice to say to the broken peoples of the world that God's spirit is within you. Live. And we can do that despite physical distancing. Today we're doing it with YouTube. And you can do it yourself with a phone call or an email. We also need to respond to God's personal call for us to come forth. Leave your unhealthy tombs. Forgive those who have sinned against you. Forgive yourself. And remember that you are a child of God and that you are loved beyond measure. Jesus doesn't want to hear, no thanks, I'm icky. Jesus already knows we're icky. So there's no sense in trying to hide. And if you are one of those people who have witnessed the miracle of life renewed, be ready to provide the balm people will need as they emerge from their ickiness. God wants us to minister to those who are emerging from their loamy places, bringing fresh water to loose any bindings that may cling stubbornly to their wounds. God knows our unruly wills and affections and wants to heal them. The question is when will we be allowed God's grace to gather us together, dry and icky, and express our true joy for each other with an embrace. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Mary Ann and Chilton, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace.
I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that, we, that they may find and be found by him. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Today we pray especially for Frank Anderson, Kim Barrett, Mary Helen Carlson, Chrissy DeFontenay, Brendan Dealey, Joan Eisenstalt, Pat Foster, Kiki Garrow, Natalie Graham, Tom and Margaret Green, Judy James, Olivia Jean, Pete and Beat Kendall, Kelsey Kimberlin, Anna Kraske and Joel Scotland and family, Gary Lorenz, Clarice Leslie, Laura Neymark, Mary Nelson, Nicholas Platt, Mary Potter, Charles Raish, Marilyn Rossi, Catherine Sands, Beth Sauerland, Claudia Siren, Anne Southard, Tom Smith, Patricia Snowden, Bert Spencer, Karen Stewart, Ann Taylor, Jimmy Tinto, Louis Viola, David, Jerry, Gretchen, and Sharon. In thanksgiving for birthdays, Loa Jane Thomason and Olivia Thomason, for Scott Williams, Karina Kimberlin, and Karen Stewart. For safety while away, Laura and Douglas Rose, Brenda, Tilla, and Kayla McAnthony, and Noelle Volz and family. For safety while at work, Sejun Kim, Ryan Fisher, Emily, and all medical personnel and first responders. Bless scientists, physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. I ask your prayers for the dying, for those who have died. Uphold them and those who mourn with the consolation of your Holy Spirit. and to those seek, who seek healing, especially those impacted by COVID-19 and all whom we name in our hearts. Grant the power of your grace, that the weak may be strengthened, sickness turned to health, the dying made whole, and sorrow turned into joy, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying... Jesus, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. The end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, O Christ. Dying, Dying you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Let us pray the words that your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in one bread. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I come spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Be present, Spirit of God, 
within us your dwelling place and home, that this house may be one where all darkness is penetrated by your light, all troubles calmed by your peace, all evil redeemed by your love, all pain transformed in your suffering, and all dying glorified in your risen life. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ be with you to defend you, within you to keep you, before you to lead you, beside you to guard you, and above you to bless you. Amen. Amen.